Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I really appreciate you joining me today and this story comes from Birmingham. We've got another story in this video from Wolverhampton involving two paramedics. But first, 21-year-old Jack Speed, ironically named, has been jailed for four years and 10 months after leading police on a 100 mile an hour police chase through the streets of Erdington. Dramatic dash cam footage from the pursuit shows Jack in his BMW 1 Series in a breakneck chase through the Birmingham suburb. After failing to stop for police at around 11pm on January the 2nd of this year, he was filmed on Gypsy Lane and also the Ridgeway before taking the wrong side of the roundabout at Cottage Road. The court heard that the chase seen speed pushing speeds of 80 miles an hour in a 30 zone. He can be seen in the footage attempting to reverse ram the police car. As he goes the wrong side, there's no other vehicles and he's gone the wrong side of College Road. Um, Stand by, okay, and he's stuck with traffic. It's Oscar Yankee 6-5, going to ram the vehicle. Okay, he's trying to ram, he's tried to reverse ram me, he's made off now, back onto court lane, left onto court lane, Oscar Yankee 6-5, X-Ray Fox Rock Zulu. Yeah, I think it's going to be an RTC, RTC. He led police on a chase down Court Lane before heading into Witten Lodge Road. The footage also shows speed running red lights at 70 miles an hour, going the wrong way around a roundabout before finally losing control of the vehicle and crashing into a wall and a parked car on Digby Road. Police quickly surround the vehicle and Jack Speed was arrested at Taser Point. Footage showed a nervous but compliant Jack. Police found a backpack containing cannabis along with a wooden baton. Speed of Sutton Coldfield, West Midlands, admitted five charges. Dangerous driving, disqualified driving, also possession of drugs with intent to supply and possession of an offensive weapon and driving without insurance. He was jailed at Birmingham Crown Court on June the 26th. So this story shows the dangers and the consequences of your actions when you choose to go out, one, carrying a large amount of drugs and two, refusing to stop for the police. So let's hope Jack can sort his life out when he does come out. This news comes out of Wolverhampton where reports of two paramedics that were attacked while attending a call for the welfare of the member of the public. The victim, Michael Hipgrove and Dina Evans, were taken to hospital and have been described as being in stable condition after being attacked at a property in Stevens Close in Wolverhampton area. Police were called and the taser was deployed during the arrest and it is believed that the man was subsequently treated by ambulance staff and then arrested. He's been held on suspicion of wounding. The crew were called out to conduct a safe and well check at around midday when they were attacked. West Midlands Police have confirmed that an officer who accompanied the crew had arrested a man at the scene. The crew sustained one stab wound each, one to the chest and one to the side. The two had featured on a Christmas special of a TV show called Inside the Ambulance. It featured on a channel called UK TV. So in some way they are minor celebrities. Mr. Hipgrove's son, Tom, last night tweeted, My dad was one of the paramedics stabbed in Wolverhampton today. It's awful. You can't be safe at work. I hope you get better, dad. His daughter, Jess, also posted on Twitter and she said, My dad was one of the paramedics stabbed today in Wolverhampton. He was only trying to do his job. We are lucky that we still have our dad with us and we will be eternally grateful for the crew that helped him and his colleague. Today could have been so much worse. Assistant Chief Ambulance Officer Nathan Hudson said, Thankfully our colleagues at West Midlands Police saved them before more serious injury occurred. Mr Hudson said, without the quick response of the police, it would probably be a totally different story today. I want to just say a really big thank you to everybody that attended this scene. Not only to my staff that have been completely and utterly professional when dealing with their colleagues, the managers uh, and also the critical care paramedics the critical care doctors and the air ambulance that all attended to make sure that my staff were looked after. I just want to say a really big thank you for what they've done uh, in something that can only be described as a very traumatic incident for everybody concerned.
The paramedics, after being treated at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham, are doing well and are stable without life-threatening injuries. Neighbours have described the man living alone in the property and believed it was a man's elderly mother who first raised concerns for his welfare. Anita Millard, who is 65, described the paramedics arriving at, alongside the police, attempting to entry by removing a door panel using a screwdriver borrowed from a neighbour. The police asked the man's mother to step back and the girl paramedic went in, followed by the other one. They then heard a blood-curdling scream. He had two knives. The male paramedic then came backwards out the house and shouted onto his radio. Then he pushed the female paramedic back towards the gate and away from it all. The guy was stood in the porch holding two knives, then the police came in and shouted taser taser and they tasered him. It is believed an additional three ambulances came, two Midlands Air Ambulance and a specialist mental health support team from the West Midlands care team responded to the stabbing also along with three paramedic officers. The victims were treated at the scene before being taken to hospital. So it's good news to hear that these two paramedics are going to make a full recovery. And we've got to obviously appreciate what they've done and the fact that they even still help the man after his reaction to this. Because they have no choice when they go out to these situations on who they're going to be confronting and what they're going to be dealing with. So I really appreciate you joining me today. Please don't forget to leave a comment and follow us online as well at Scar City Studios on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And I'll be back again very soon with some more news. Peace.